one of the biggest complaints we had with Resistance 1 was that Hale himself wasn't as strong a character as people hoped. And the other thing was that we took the focus off of Hale quite a bit with a narrative approach that we used in the game. So this time, we're not using a narrative approach. We're telling the story 100% from Hale's perspective. Hale himself is also becoming a stronger character in that he's a lot more, he's, he's more in charge. He's actually giving the orders in this game versus being told what to do and where to go. And there are other things that are happening along the way that we haven't revealed yet that will definitely make him a, uh, the deeper character that we always wanted him to be. The two big features that we've announced so far for multiplayer are 60-player online competitive modes and 8-player online co-op mode. And we decided to kind of go for it with both of these modes because we felt comfortable with the number of players in Resistance 1 uh, in multiplayer, 40 players. We felt like we had a good handle on how to make that gameplay fun, and we decided that, okay, we can take it further. We can make a, an even bigger multiplayer experience, but this time we can actually control the chaos even better by introducing some new techniques, which we haven't revealed yet, um, in terms of squad management, that will create this feeling of a big-ass battle, but in a, a more controlled, more focused uh, gameplay uh, objective as you're playing. With eight-player online co-op, we got lots of complaints with Resistance 1 that we hadn't included online co-op at all. So we knew that was something we wanted to do, but we decided that let's just not do online co-op the way everybody expects us to do it. Let's create online co-op with a lot more players than is expected. Uh, let's add classes, several classes in online co-op, and let's create a story for online co-op that parallels the story in the single-player campaign. I don't think anybody's really tested the limits of the number of players you can get into a multiplayer match, and, and I don't know where the line blurs between online competitive and an MMO. So for us, the focus is on action and on playing with a squad, with a group of guys that you're really comfortable with to achieve specific objectives in multiplayer. Of course, we do have some MMO elements uh, that will show up and we haven't really talked about, but... I can tell you in Resistance 1, we have plenty of unlockables and, and rewards, and that's something that we'd like to do again in Resistance 2. In online co-op, we have three different classes of soldier, and they're all complementary in terms of their strengths. We have a, a soldier, he's more of a tank, who has a very powerful weapon and has a lot more hit points than anybody else. We have a special ops class who's much more of a, a long-distance damage dealer, and, it has, and it's, his focus is on accuracy and speed. And we have a medic who is kind of a balance, a uh, very balanced character in that he can actually do offensive damage, but he heals his counterparts in the game. And what's kind of cool with him is that his weapon actually charges up more the more damage he does to enemies. So to actually heal your teammates, you do have to go on the offensive. And so that is a, a character that demands more management than the other two, but it is a lot of fun playing him. It's really hard to put a number on how much of the PlayStation 3's power we've tapped. I know that with every game that we developed on the PlayStation 3, we're seeing a significant advance in terms of what we can show on screen and what we can support in terms of processes like AI and special effects processing. So the result has typically been uh, a major advance in visuals and in complexity, whether it's the complexity of AI for the characters or just stuff bouncing around the environment. So. What, we, what I like to say is that Resistance 1 kind of started here for us. Ratchet moved up significantly in terms of the tech, and Resistance 2 is going to be a, an equivalent leap in terms of tech. I think it's been gratifying for all of us to see that the PlayStation 3 has a lot of power to play with, and it's just up to us to maximize it. I, I have to say that uh, we are still influenced by some of the weapons in Disruptor. Um, there were some great ones, and... I don't know, maybe you, may see, maybe you might see a nod to one or two in this game or maybe future games. Look for it.